What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I am back today to give you a review of the Nike Air Max 186 OG Big Bubble in this white and royal blue colorway. So this white and blue colorway of the Air Max 1 is not only iconic, but it's one of the original colorways of the Air Max 1 to ever release. Don't quote me on this, but I believe the last time we saw this in true OG form was the anniversary release that dropped back in 2017. But this time it's being given the Big Bubble treatment following the white and red colorway that released last year. So these release on March 22nd for a price of 150 US dollars or 190 here in Canada. The colorway for this shoe is white and royal blue, and these are available at most major Nike sportswear retailers, including The Closet Inc. here in Canada. The Closet Inc. is my go-to shop for Nike and Air Jordan retros, and they're independently owned and operated based right here in Southern Ontario in Canada and they offer some of the best deals nationwide. So check out their website, which I've linked down below. Be sure to support the independent shops and tell them that I sent you. So this Big Bubble Air Max 1 pays homage to the initial run of the Air Max 1, which actually released in 1986. So while the Air Max 1 is commonly known as releasing in 1987, there was actually a smaller batch that released with a slightly different design and it featured a different looking midsole and of course, this larger air bubble. But Nike quickly found out that in colder weather, this larger airbag was prone to cracking. That's why they went back to the drawing board, quickly redesigned this midsole, and released the more commonly seen version of the Air Max 1 in 1987. So just like any other big bubble release, this comes in this black and red colored cardboard box. We have this Nike swoosh window on the very top, along with these air bubbles on the side of the box as well. So diving into the details of this shoe, starting things off with the toe box, this is covered in this white mesh, which is done in this herringbone style weave. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have this synthetic blue colored suede, which feels like felt to the touch. Covering the U throat as well as the quarter panel of the shoe, we have this light gray colored synthetic suede, and then the top two eyelets are covered in this blue colored TPU. On the mid panel, we have this blue colored swoosh, which is also constructed out of synthetic suede. And beneath this, this blue suede mudguard covers the entire bottom portion of the shoe wrapping around the heel. Covering the middle of the heel, we have more of that light gray colored synthetic suede, and we have Nike Air branding embroidered in blue in the back. And then the ankle collar area, this is covered in this white colored nylon, which has a very soft and silky feel to it to the touch. As far as laces go, so this pair only comes with one lace option, and they're a thin, flat style lace done in white, and these are noticeably thinner compared to your typical Air Max 1 laces. Underneath this, the tongue is primarily constructed out of that same mesh that covers the toe box. However, the sides of the top of the tongue are covered in nylon, and then we have this tag on the top of the tongue with Nike Air Max branding in blue. The interior of the shoe is thinly padded, it's noticeably thinner compared to a typical Air Max 1. And then pressed onto the medial side, we have the size of the shoe, along with this retro-inspired tag stating the country of manufacture. And then for the insoles, nothing special here. This is your typical foam line insole, which is pretty thin. And we have Nike Air branding pressed onto the heel in white. So the upper of this Air Max 1 sits atop this chunky polyurethane foam midsole, which has a very smooth finish to it to the touch. This midsole is entirely painted in white, and underneath the heel, we have this exposed giant airbag, which features four air chambers instead of the typical three, which is seen on normal Air Max 1s. And fun fact, there's also a smaller air unit that sits underneath the forefoot, which is encased within the foam midsole. Turning the shoe over to the bottom, so this outsole is constructed out of a mix of white, black, and blue colored rubber. We have your typical waffle style traction pattern on the forefoot, along with Nike Air branding on the heel. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And I know most of you guys are wondering, how did these fit? So keep in mind, this shoe is technically released as a women's shoe, but I'm pretty sure they're offered in extended sizing. So basically it's a unisex sneaker, but because they are sold in women's sizing, to get your men's size equivalent, you'd go up one and a half sizes. So my true size is a size 10, meaning I got these in a size 11 and a half. And I don't know if this is just confirmation bias knowing that this is a women's release, but I actually found that this pair ran a little bit more narrow width wise. So again, I don't know if this is just my mind playing tricks on me, but it felt a little bit more cramped around this toe box, not to the point where it was uncomfortable, but it felt a little bit more snug than a typical Air Max 1 that I wear, or even some of the other colorways of the Air Max 1 Big Bubble. So I feel like for narrow, normal, or slightly wide feet, go with your actual true size, but if you have a wider foot, you'd probably be better off going up a half size. 
So as an example, if you're normally a size eight men's and you have a wide foot, instead of going with a women's nine and a half, I'd probably recommend going up to the size 10. Moving on to the comfort, so even though this features a larger air unit, for me at least, I don't really notice a noticeable improvement in comfort. It still feels relatively firm on foot, especially underneath the forefoot, and yes, while the heel of the shoe feels a little bit more elevated off the ground, I didn't really notice any significant improvement comfort-wise. So for an everyday casual use shoe, it's gonna be perfectly fine, but just because it has this larger air unit, don't expect it to have a substantial upgrade in comfort. Finally, in terms of the quality and craftsmanship, so first off, the material quality was really nothing special. We have a bunch of synthetic materials like a typical Air Max 1, so we have a bunch of meshes, nylons, and the synthetic suede which again feels very much like felt. I don't know if this is how the originals from 1986-87 were built, but really there's nothing special or good about the materials whatsoever. And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, this pair was pretty solid. I know in the past, some of my Big Bubble Air Max ones have had issues, but I think this pair was relatively fine. The mesh was stitched on straight, there was no weird warping or bubbling, and the panels were relatively consistent between my left foot and the right foot. So hopefully your pair is decent. I know the QC on these pairs are typically not the best, so fingers crossed. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet, I'll lace them up and I'll show you guys how these look. This white and blue Air Max 1 Big Bubble is the perfect complement to the white and red that dropped last year. And especially if you don't own the anniversary pairs, I think this is a must have for any Air Max 1 fan out there. I do own the Air Max 1 anniversaries in both colors, so this is more of a nice to have for me. But it's just one of those shoes that every time they drop in OG form, it's just a shoe that I always want to pick up. And it seems like this shoe is pretty decently stocked, a lot of retailers are releasing them. So if you guys strike out or have struck out at the retail level, I don't think the resale prices for this shoe should be bad whatsoever. So leave a comment down below to let me know what do you guys think about this white and blue Air Max 1 Big Bubble. What are your thoughts on this colorway and the overall shape of this shoe? Are you a fan of this 86 Big Bubble version? Do you prefer the 87 cut instead? Leave your thoughts down below and let's talk about it. And as usual, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on X or Twitter at sean.go spelt out, and visit my website at seango.ca. So thanks so much for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.